Good evening. Welcome to another session of the precepts from the Proverbs. Man today has been obsessed with the pursuit of happiness, so much so that it is the underlying driving force for everything that is done. I just want to be happy. That seems to be something resonating from within the hearts of every man. And it appears to be what is the deepest seated desires of many in this world today. But the question is, how can one be happy? I mean, how can one be truly happy? Now, our passage for study today in Proverbs chapter 3, and let me turn your attention to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 to verse 14. Now, Solomon gives us a straightforward answer as to how man can be happy. It says, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 13 says this, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Now, this simply says, Solomon is instructing his son as part of the parental prerogative of parents in Israel to teach their children the will and the ways of the Lord that is expressed in the law of the Lord. Now, Solomon is simply telling his son, happy is the man that obtains wisdom and understanding. So for the question, how can one be happy? For Israel, the answer is wisdom. Now, some may say, so that does, does that mean that happiness is by getting higher education? Is it the reason or the secret to happiness? Maybe you're saying, maybe that's the reason why people look forward to move from elementary school to high school to college to finish a bachelor's degree to finish a graduate degree and so on and so forth. But did you know that Solomon, the wisest king, having learned almost everything in this world, finds the printing and the reading of the books taxing, vexing, and vanity? There is something here when Solomon says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. We have to listen very carefully because it is important to see the book of Proverbs in its dispensational and literary context, or else we would set ourselves for a heartbreak not understanding what the wisdom and understanding is in the Israelite perspective. We have, as the scriptures tell us, to study the word of truth, rightly dividing it. For Solomon and Israel, wisdom and understanding is not simply the accumulation of knowledge, nor is it the pursuit of degrees or higher education. It's something else. Now, please turn your Bibles with me to help us see what wisdom and understanding is for Israel's perspective. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 to 6. Here we see Moses instructing the people of Israel about wisdom and understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 to 6 says this, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Here is Moses as the spokesperson to Israel, is telling the nation of Israel that God has given him statutes and commandments that the same is passed by Moses to the people and that the people should hear this and perform it. Verse number 6 says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of these nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God, 
is in all things that we call upon him for. You see, Moses is telling Israel that he, they have to keep the commandments for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the, all the nations. It's very clear. Wisdom and understanding for Israel is in keeping the law. Now, it's interesting that verse 9 of Deuteronomy chapter 4 reads this. It says, Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. The law of the Lord is commanded for the people of Israel to be kept, to be observed, and to be taught to the next generation. That, my friends, is what Solomon is doing in the book of Proverbs, addressing his son, telling his son that happiness is in the wisdom that leads to keeping the law. Now, this would also be observable in the occurrences of the word happy in the book of Proverbs. It's used six times in the book of Proverbs, and every time it occurs, it has something to do with the law of the Lord. Now, let me just walk you for a while of the occurrences of the word happy in the book of Proverbs, and let me show you how it connects back to the law of the Lord. Now, aside from Proverbs chapter 3, which the word happy occurs twice, there's another time that it occurs in Proverbs, let me turn your attention to Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 21. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 21, and we will see another occurrence of the word happy. Proverbs 14, verse 21 says, He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Now maybe you cannot find a connection of the mercy to the poor with the keeping of the Old Testament law. But if you want to check it for yourself, it's in the Old Testament law in Exodus chapter 22, chapter 23, in the book of Leviticus chapter 19, 23, and 25, as well as Deuteronomy chapter 15 and 24, how the Israelites are to show mercy to the, to the poor keeping Old Testament law. And to show mercy to the poor, happy is he. Another, let me turn your attention to Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 20. And the word of God says this, He that handeth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Remember the introduction statement of Proverbs chapter 1? It says there that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that Fear of the Lord, beginning with wisdom, leads a person to trust in the Lord and keep parental commands. That would be Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 up to verse 10. Now, here's another proverb that shows happiness. Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 14. Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 14 says this, Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Now, we should read the context in verse 13 that says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. By the context, this is not just any gener generic fear, but this is the fear of the Lord not to cover sins, but rather confess and to forsake sins to obtain the Lord's mercy. And we read in Proverbs chapter seven, uh, chapter 1, verses uh, 7 to 19, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and causes one to depart from evil. You see the connection with the law of the Lord? Another in Proverbs chapter 29, and this would be the last occurrence of the term happy in the book of Proverbs in connection to the Old Testament law. And this is actually the clincher. Proverbs chapter 29, verse number 18 says this, Where there is no vision, the people perish, 
but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, that's quite straightforward. That's so clear. For Israel, happiness is in keeping the law. Now, the question is, why? This is explained in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 14. Now, let's read back to Proverbs chapter 3 and let me read to you verses 13 to verse 14 that says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Verse number 14, For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Simply put, happy is the one that finds wisdom and understanding that leads to keeping the law because keeping the law results in the covenant blessings for Israel. Now, we have heard about the covenant blessings again and again when we learned about the book of Proverbs because that is actually the point. Solomon is teaching his son the wisdom that shows the covenant blessings for obedience versus the covenant curses for disobedience. You are absolutely unwise, foolish, stubborn, arrogant if you would choose curses than blessings. But for us to have a foretaste of what the blessings were given to Israel are, let me turn your attention again to the book of Deuteronomy. And again, you see the connections always in the book of Proverbs going back to the Old Testament law because that's what Solomon is executing as part of his parental prerogative in teaching his children. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and let me read to you verses 1 up to verse 13, and we would see the covenant blessings of God that He promised His people Israel if they would keep the law. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to verse 13. And the Word of God says this, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now that's a promise. If Israel obeys all the commandments, not some of the commandments, not most of the commandments, but all the commandments, God will set them up above all the nations of this world. Verse number two, and all this blessing shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, if you have your time, you keep on reading verses three to verse 12, and it would enumerate all the physical blessings for Israel if they would keep the law. And summarize in verse 13, let's jump to that. Verse number 13 says this, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Did you see? Do not take this promise for Gentiles, because this is Moses talking to the nation of Israel, telling them to obey all all of the law of the Lord. As a matter of fact, in this dispensation of grace, we could not keep all the laws. Now maybe you'll say, no, it's impossible. I can keep the law. But let me ask you this. When was the last time you offered to a Levitical priest? Have you brought the sacrifices of oxen, of clean animals or birds? Have you brought in the tithes to the storehouses in the temple in Jerusalem? Or you haven't even set, for, set foot in Jerusalem, have you? So you see, in that regard, a Gentile in this dispensation of grace cannot fulfill Old Testament law. And if we cannot fulfill the Old, Old Testament law, why would we even assume that we can reap the covenant blessings that were not given to us to begin with. But here's a biblical truth. For Israel, they are to keep 
the law to reap the covenant blessings. And that is actually wisdom. Would you rather reap the covenant curses? Because that's actually written in, uh, written in Deuteronomy chapter 28 as well. If you go through the covenant curses that starts from verse number 14, when it says, And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right or to the left, and to go after other gods to serve them, and says, But if but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Who would rather be cursed than blessed? So here's the wisdom that Solomon tells his son. Happiness is in the wisdom that keeps the law reaping the covenant blessings. But here's a good question. Is happiness for us in the keeping of the law in this dispensation of grace? As I've mentioned a while ago, it's impossible for us Gentiles to keep all the law. If any, the only thing that we can have are the curses of the law if we try to live according to the law. Now we see that we see the term happy used one time by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 14, verse number 22. Now let's turn to that and see how it would apply in our dispensation. And remember, for Israel, happiness is in keeping the law in order to reap the covenant blessings. But for us, is it in keeping the law? Let's read Romans chapter 14, verse number 22. Now, mind you, Romans chapter 14 speaks about the freedom of the law, freedom from the law. Romans chapter 14, verse number 22, this is what the Apostle Paul says, and this is the only time he used the word happy. He says, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Now, the context of Romans chapter 14 is freedom from the law, as we would read verse 14 of Romans chapter 14 that says, uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 14 that says, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him that is unclean. Basically, this is the picture that Paul is saying that Israel's dietary laws are not binding for the believers in this dispensation of grace. Because Romans chapter 14 verse number 17 says this, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. A believer in this dispensation of grace is neither made blessed, made better, by what we eat or don't eat, by what we drink or don't drink, or when we celebrate our days. For the Apostle Paul says, Let no man judge you by what you eat, by what you drink, or by any holy day. Now think about that. There seems to be a contrast here because the one believer in this dispensation of grace is happy when he condemneth not himself in what he eats. Truth is, happiness for the believer in this dispensation of grace is to be free from the law. Now, that's a contrast. For Israel, happiness is in keeping the law. But for believers today, happiness is being made free from the law. Now, what made that difference? Now, let me turn your attention now to Galatians chapter 3. And let's see what happened in this dispensation of grace that made God's dealing with us different, according to our Apostle Paul. Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 to 13 says this, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. If we Gentiles will be gauged by the works of the law, we would have failed. 
We don't have a Levitical priesthood. We do not have the altar in Jerusalem. We haven't even been to Jerusalem. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. The fact that we didn't worship on a Saturday, on a Sabbath day, already places us under the curse of the law if the law is what justifies us today. Verse 11, But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident the just shall live by faith. Now there's a difference there. In the book of Habakkuk, the Old Testament prophet said the just shall live by his faith. But in our dispensation, the apostle Paul says the just shall live by faith. Now hold your place in Galatians chapter 3 and just check for a while Galatians 2.16. And it would show us that our justification is not by our faith. We are not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. The just shall live by faith. It says here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, it's not our faith, it's the faith of Jesus Christ. And did you know that the faith of Christ produced the perfect work? That in Romans chapter 5, we are justified by His blood. That is summarized in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 as the declaration of the death of Christ for our sins, burial, and resurrection. That Jesus Christ was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. The faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ justified the believer in this dispensation of grace. So let no man say that faith without works is dead. And it's untrue that we would just only believe and be saved. Because my friends, the scripture says, it's not even our faith that justifies us. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. And in verse 12 it says, And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Now that's troubling. If we would keep the law, we will be judged by the law and we would fail. It's not that it's not possible for us in this dispensation to keep the law. You think you can be saved by going to a priest of a certain religion? Ask that priest with all honesty. Can you, can he give you his lineage tracing back to Levi? I don't think so. Don't hold your breath because he can't. If your pastor thinks that you will be blessed if you give tithes to him, ask him again. Where in the Bible does it say you can pay tithes by using pesos, dollars? Is it not? Is it not agricultural products? And you see how we violate the law. And if we live by the law to do the works of the law, we shall live in them. And we will die because of them. In verse 13, it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The good news is, we who are supposed to be cursed were the curse was removed from us and placed on Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, buried and on the third day rose again for our justification. And that's the gospel that we preach, that we are freed from the law by the faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ who died for our sins, buried, and the third day rose again for our justification. And for this reason, because of this work of Jesus Christ in this dispensation of grace declared by our Apostle Paul, we read what's written in Romans chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. That says, 
But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This speaks about Christ's finished work. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And in verse 11, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. My friends, here's the truth we want you to hear tonight. Happiness in this dispensation of grace is found only in trusting in Christ. Happiness in this dispensation of grace today is only found by trusting in Christ. You can have this freedom from the law, being justified not by your own faith, not by your own works, but by the faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ. And this is the gospel that you need to hear today, preached by our Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4, that says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he rose again and in that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And after we hear that gospel, we trust in Christ. Have you found the happiness that is only found in trusting in Christ? And I pray that as you listen to the words tonight, if your pursuit is happiness in the things of this world, you will be severely disappointed because happiness in this dispensation of grace is only found in trusting in Christ. I pray that you would consider what we say and the Lord give you understanding in all things. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that happiness in this dispensation is found only in trusting in you. The key to being blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I pray, Father God, that the truth that we listen to, to your word tonight would simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you very much for listening. We pray that we would catch you in our future broadcast on Thursday. We have the online Bible study in the book of 1 Thessalonians. And on Saturday, we have the comfort verses in context. Hope to catch you again next week for another live broadcast of the precepts from the Proverbs. Thank you very much for listening. The Lord bless you.